All right, good morning. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Transform Caribbean, Disaster Preparedness with the Cloud. My name is Colin Graves, and I am the head of public relations at Digicel Trinidad and Tobago. And I can tell you that, you know, it's really such a pleasure to be here with you all this morning as your host, as we, of course, di discuss this really important topic that affects all of us throughout the Caribbean region. Again, we're talking about transforming the Caribbean and preparing ourselves for disasters by using cloud services. So today we are joined by participants from all throughout the Caribbean. And I'm talking participants from Barbados, the Cayman Islands, Jamaica, and Trinidad and Tobago. And we also have a wide range of really great experts on the subject matter in the field from Microsoft, Digital Business, and Trend, the leading digital advertising agency in the Caribbean, along with one of their partner companies, Infobip, a partner for the omni-channel platform. And we'll go into all of these things a bit later. So as I mentioned, all of the participants, you know, we are all from throughout the Caribbean. And they have, we have lots of SMB owners online with us this morning, lots of IT professionals, um, and everyone is here to learn and exchange ideas and build resilience within and throughout our region. Today, we will be learning about business continuity and how to transform the customer working environment and how to keep customers updated through cloud communication services during and after a, um, a disaster. And I mean, for our friends out there from the other countries throughout, throughout the Caribbean, we are no stranger to disasters. We always, the Caribbean is never short of a hurricane, a, a tropical storm. I mean, just a couple of weeks ago, we had about three of them back to back. So we definitely are almost experts in, in disaster preparedness. And this is going to be just another tool that you're going to have in your arsenal of getting an, your businesses back up and running following these disasters. Today is all about we also will be addressing the misconceptions out there that, you know, cloud services are only for large companies. I mean, come on, um, let's face it. All businesses, regardless of size, you know, we all need to plan for disasters. I mean, I've never heard of a hurricane, a storm or an earthquake only picking to affect a large company versus a small company. You know, does the, does the, the tropical storm skip the, the small company and only go to the large companies? No, it doesn't. It affects all of us. And therefore, you know, we all need to be equipped with various tools, services and knowledge about how we will have business continuity post disaster and not only have business continuity, but also have it done in a timely, effective and cost efficient manner. Yeah. So here's how today will run. We'll have presentations by our three partners, Microsoft, Digital Business and Infobip, Trend and Infobip. And then following that, we'll have a Q&A session where you guys out there, you get to ask your questions directly to our various presenters. And to do this, it's really simple. Here in Microsoft Teams, you're going to go to the top right hand um, corner of your screen. You're going to see um, two chat boxes. One has a question mark and the other one is behind it. That's the, the, the Q&A tab. So you can use that and throughout today's session, feel free to post your questions and your questions can be posted anonymously, or you can say who you are and which country you're from. And then, of course, later in the Q&A session, I'll be sure to ask these questions of our various presenters, right? Um, also, great news today, you know, for taking the time and logging on to address such a really great topic, you are going to have a chance to win a Samsung S20 FE courtesy Digicel business. And all you have to do to win is simply add your name to a spreadsheet that's going to be uploaded into the chat. So again, if you go back to the chat, you're going to see a spreadsheet that's going to be uploaded by the admins from the, the seminar this morning. And you simply go there, add your name to the spreadsheet. Um, and later today, um, following the end of the presentations, we'll just randomly select one of you as the winner of that brand new Samsung S20. Now, as I mentioned at the start, at the start we definitely have um, participants from four more countries. So when you win that cell phone, that brand new smartphone, you're also going to um, have a market representative from your various market contact you so that you can collect your price, right? So as we get the ball rolling on this morning's presentations, I mentioned earlier that Microsoft is one of our partners on this event. And 
I'm sure you all know that they already have a very comprehensive suite of cloud products and tools that can help you increase your security measures and they'll give you the ability to recover data and reconnect with your customers in the event of a natural disaster. So this morning with us, we have Sam French from Microsoft. Sam is an Azure um, infrastructure and application specialist from Microsoft for the English speaking Caribbean region. He's been with Microsoft for more than three years, working as an Azure infrastructure engineer with large US enterprises before moving into this role. You know, Sam focuses on commercial accounts, including finance, banking, insurance, manufacturing, telcos, and so much more. And he's previously had experience working in insurance, IT consulting, and the aviation industries before taking up his role with Microsoft. Sam's Azure's passions are anything from logging, in as a, logging as a service related, um, specifically storage, VMs, on-prem, um, to assure connectivity. So here this morning to deliver business continuity with Azure disaster preparedness, it's my pleasure to welcome Sam French. Good morning, Sam. Hi, everybody. How's it going? Thanks for the doing introduction, pretty, Colin. Doing pretty well. And how are you? Good, good. Yeah, that summed it up pretty well. I've been with Microsoft for about three and a half years now and loving my time here and really excited to talk to you all today. Well, we're excited to hear from you. So over to you, Sam. Thanks. So uh, this is my presentation. So we're going to talk about business continuity with Azure and specifically disaster preparedness. So again, I'm Sam French. I'm an Azure infrastructure specialist for the English speaking Caribbean. I focus mainly on commercial accounts. Um, and I'm looking forward to, to running through all of this with you. So as Colin mentioned, the Caribbean is no stranger to natural disasters. Uh, myself, I'm in Florida, so I'm no stranger either. We did have a couple storms come through. Fingers crossed we're on the downward slope and almost done for the season. Um, but hopefully some of this can apply to you and hopefully you can get something valuable out of it. So why do you need a backup and disaster recovery strategy? There's a couple different reasons beyond just the tropical storm hurricane front. Some of these reasons are ransomware, data corruption and accidental deletion, outages and natural disasters, and of course, compliance. And we'll touch on all of these topics today throughout the 20 minutes I have with you guys. Organizations with an adequate backup and disaster recovery strategy are accepting a large element of risk. Studies have found that 93% of organizations have been attacked by malware or ransomware in the last 24 months. This basically means that it's inevitable. It's probably going to happen at some time. In fact, 83% of organizations can expect a successful malware or ransomware intrusion at some point. This makes preparedness and the ability to have business continuity and disaster recovery very imperative. We also found that less than 50% of applications are currently protected by a disaster recovery plan, meaning that many organizations are not prepared or protected when it comes to responding to a large scale recovery situation. The impact of an outage on your digital business. So everyone knows that downtime equals money, whether that's more IT staff working around the clock to get you back up and running, your business folks, your line of businesses are down and can't operate. If you're a bank, you can no longer take applications for mortgages or loans. All of your systems are down. We found that the average mission critical workload downtime can range anywhere from 2,500 US dollars to 50,000 US dollars per hour per workload. So if you're a smaller firm and you have, have 10 workloads that go down, we estimate that that could be around $25,000 per hour of business lost when dealing with an outage. Because of this, it's critical to be able to be redundant, to be able to back up all of your information, and to be able to recover quickly from any kind of downtime. Ensure business continuity to avoid costly disruption. Going off of the last slide, some of the things that are in our solution, Microsoft Azure, that would allow for this simplicity, this high availability, if you will. Uh, these are some of the tools that exist in our Azure environment. You can protect your resources on-prem or that exist already in the cloud. Some examples here, we have one-click backup for virtual machines and databases. You can protect yourself from ransomware and human errors like accidental deletion. You can recover data and applications quickly and reliably. 
And we typically find that customers can save up to 47% on infrastructure. Disaster recovery and backup, why you need both. Disaster recovery is when your applications have a catastrophic failure. Quickly recover and run them in Azure or on a secondary data center. And in the case of Azure geographic pairs, if one Azure region fails, it will automatically fail over to another Azure region. What I mean by that is if you're a firm who is a cloud first firm and you have virtual machines or you have storage running in our East US data center and the Eastern seaboard of the United States experiences uh, a widespread hurricane and power outages, all of your data will remain online and secure when it automatically fails over to our West US data center located on the Western United States coast. Backup, when your data is corrupted or lost, you can restore your data to the original location or to a new location. And you can retain backups for long periods of time. I constantly have customers come to me and, and say that they're looking to keep backups for 10, 15 years, and there's no problem with that. You can keep backups as long as you'd like in Azure. You can simplify your data protection with built-in backup. So when we talk about some of the things that are able to be backed up with Azure, we're talking about your on-premises servers, whether that's a server that you might have in an office building, a server that you might have in a data center, or a server that you might have in a colo, a co-location data center. By connecting that to Azure Backup Service, you're able to have access to all kinds of backup services there, like automated backup and cleanup, automated storage management, malicious data protection, secure and encrypted backups. This applies to existing Azure virtual machines, new Azure virtual machines, SQL VMs in Azure, SAP HANA VMs living in Azure, and of course, Azure Files. Azure Files, for those of you who aren't aware, is basically a file share that lives inside of Azure. When backing all of these things up to an Azure backup service, you do have access to this management plane you can see in the right-hand corner of your screen here. So you have access to snapshots, you have policies that can be enforced, you have access control, which is implemented through what we call RBAC, which is role-based access control. Basically, who can do what in Azure with that data? And then you have access to monitoring and reporting tools like Azure Advisor and Azure Monitor. All of this is built-in management at scale. Again, it's scalable, durable, and secure. And there are native workload integrations just like Azure Files and SAP HANA. Some of the characteristics of an enterprise grade backup solution. So Azure Backup through its data protection platform does the heavy lifting for you. It allows teams to enable enterprise grade backup for their resources with minimal effort. Some of the things that would be encompassed in this type of backup solution would be a self-service backup and restoration option. No single point of failure system. Again, we are talking about highly available backup systems you know, I could have a failover region on the Eastern United States and the Western United States, or I could even have my backup locations in different countries. As long as they are region pairs, you can automatically fail those over. There are plenty of security controls for destructive operations and rogue admin scenarios like RBAC, which is what I mentioned, multi-factor authentication, soft delete, which is basically like a recycle bin for any accidental deletion of your data, we do have all of a uh, all of this management from a single pane, pane of glass. Basically, in one place in Azure, the Azure portal, you can manage all of this. And then, of course, you have expert help from our specialized partners, some of which are on the call today. Minimize downtime with Azure Site Recovery. So, as we said, with a business continuity and disaster recovery so solution, you need both backups and disaster recovery. There is a difference. So a backup is making sure that your data is secure and a disaster recovery solution is making sure that you can recover quickly when an outage does occur. Azure Site Recovery would be our solution running in Microsoft Azure to enable you to recover quickly if something were to occur. Again, you can easily deploy and manage this. It will help reduce infrastructure costs, you can minimize downtime with that dependable recovery, and it is a heterogeneous environment. So in this example here, we have a few VMware data centers, 
we have some Hyper-V data centers or some existing Azure virtual machines. By using Azure Site Recovery connectors or agents and extenders, you have access to the data plane, which is very similar to our backup data plane. You have data compression, point in time recovery, data pruning, data encryption, and very similar management plane options there. We have authentication through RBAC. We have access control. Who can access what? Is it coming from a restricted IP address? Is it coming from a restricted type of device? Am I saying that only folks with Windows and Mac OS devices can access the data, but no cell phones? And then again, monitoring and reporting tools. What is resiliency? So resiliency is not about avoiding failures, but how to respond to failures. Again, if we think about the slide that I first showed, 93% of customers have experienced some sort of ransomware or malware related downtime in the last two years, and 83% of customers will experience it in the near future. So it's inevitable. For the point of today, it's probably going to happen. And how would you recover if it did happen? So using Azure, we have some options for high availability, disaster recovery, and again, backup, the latter of the two we've talked about. But when it comes to high availability, we want to make sure that your most important workloads remain up and active at all times. And there's a few way to do that, a few ways to do that. So the first way that we can do that with some high availability is using what's called an availability set in Azure. So on the left here, you can see that any single instance virtual machine using premium storage on all of its disks is backed by a 99.9% .9 uptime SLA. We're basically saying in this example, I have a web server with multiple premium storage disks attached. Microsoft is going to guarantee that that virtual machine will be up and running 99.9% .9 of the minutes, seconds, and hours in one calendar year. If, however, this is a crucial and critical workload, we recommend that you pair this with another virtual machine running the same exact workload. And we're placing, placing this in what we call an availability set. An availability set is basically two instances deployed in the same zone, if you will. And we can guarantee an SLA of 99.95% uptime in a year. I know that 0.05% doesn't seem like a big difference, but it really does come down to 16 ish hours in a year. So availability sets are crucial for those high availability critical workloads to make sure that you are prepared for anything mother nature or ransomware could throw at you. Beyond an availability set, we do offer something called an availability zone. So an availability zone is physically separate in a data center. If you look at the image on the right, imagine that I have a web server and I create two clones so that they can share the load and remain highly available. In our previous example on the last slide, we're placing both of these virtual machines in the same physical data center. Chances are they'll be on separate racks, but they will be in the same building. When we move to an availability zone, we're actually spreading those VMs across different buildings. Each of those buildings are physically separate, anywhere from a few yards to half a mile, two miles apart. They each have their own power, cooling, and security, as well as internet connections. There's hardly any latency here. We're talking about 1.2 milliseconds of latency between these physical buildings. So if one of these buildings were to flood or one of these buildings were to get hit by a very isolated tornado or some sort of isolated power outage, you would still have two of those highly available virtual machines running in those separate buildings. All of that is contained inside of one Azure region, but if this Azure region were to fail, we can actually fail over to another Azure region. So when we talk about this data resiliency and data protection, if that region were to fail, we could multiply it over to another region. And if you look in, on the left under this box that says data resiliency boundary, what I really like about this graphic is you can see that in region one, I have three different zones. Each has two virtual machines running. So I have six VMs 
and two are in each building. Each of these buildings, again, is separated physically. It has its own power, cooling, internet security. But hundreds of miles away in region two, I also have two more virtual machines running just in case all of region one goes offline. This is what we call a region pair. Again, back to my example, East US and West US. If the Western United States is your primary region and it gets hit by an earthquake in California and all of the power to region one is knocked out, the generators run out of fuel and there's nothing left, those virtual machines will fail over automatically to region two, which is located in Virginia, and all of your data would be online, secure, and you would never experience any sort of downtime. That is some disaster recovery if I've ever heard of it. You can protect against entire data center loss using this. And again, we can offer that SLA of 99.99% for your mission critical applications by using those high availability options like availability sets and zones across multiple different regions. Again, we have 62 Azure regions and counting. For the Caribbean, typically we recommend East US or, or East US 2. They are both located in Virginia. One is Northern Virginia, kind of near Washington DC, and one is Southern Virginia. We are coming online with what we're calling East US 3, which will be outside of Atlanta, Georgia, at an undisclosed location for now. That will probably be the fastest, least amount of latency. And typically carriers can run fiber optic cables from your office locations through to our Miami terminal and then route you directly to the data center. Azure covers over 93 compliance offerings. Some of these that stand out would be your ISO 2700, your SOC1, SOC2, and SOC3 on your global offerings over there on the left. And then in the middle, for this industry panel, the ones that stick out to me the most being in the US would be the HIPAA protection offerings as well as high trust certification. As you can see, there's plenty of compliance offerings here and disaster recovery in the cloud helps you stay compliant. And we have the deepest and most comprehensive compliance coverage in the industry more than any other cloud provider. Customers reduce complexity and cost with data protection in Azure. A couple examples of customers who have benefited from this are the Hospital of Ottawa. A quote from them would be, with the cloud, you don't need to stock up on components. You can just leverage the technology right away. San Diego State University says, as we shift from our on-premises cloud to a public cloud, we'll spend even less time operating that storage, backup, and compute infrastructure, and more time focusing on the important business needs. That has to do with that high availability and that SLA almost guaranteeing no downtime. And then we have Legacy Health here on the right. We were able to spin up resources in a few hours instead of months, and we've reduced the operational costs of disaster recovery by almost 65%. We essentially provided a half million dollar capital purchase. And again, that's the beauty of Azure. Resources can be deployed in hours, minutes even, instead of months. And of large capital expenses let's say i want to purchase a secondary data center and that might cost my firm a few million dollars instead i could spin up a few virtual machines that are standing by powered off in azure i'm not paying for them while i'm using them and when i need them i just go ahead and turn them on and that's kind of what legacy health is getting at saving half a million dollars in capital expenditures azure's here to meet your business continuity needs Azure Backup plus Azure Site Recovery plus our partner solutions. We found a 51% improvement in the efficiency of teams, 76% faster backups, a 66% reduction in the average data recovery time, and a 337 five-year return on investment. So with high availability again, an isolated VM is backed by an SLA of 99.9. .9. There is a hardware failure SLA of 99.95 an entire data center failure SLA of 99.9, .9, and a return to operation for 30 minutes for an entire region failure. What I mean by that is if California were to go offline, we back that with a 30 minute return to operation time. So some key takeaways as we wrap up here, I know my time's coming to a close with you guys. There are some differentiated Azure approaches for business continuities. You can meet your 
business continuity and disaster recovery compliance needs inside of Azure with those 93 compliance offerings. We have some simple configuration of backup and disaster recovery, and we can help reduce costs by leveraging backup and site recovery. Again, 337% return on investment after five years. Well, that's all I have for you. I know our time is short. Um, and thank you, Colin, for giving me the opportunity to talk to everybody. I really appreciate it. So back over to you. And thank you very much, Sam. Such an um, informative and insightful presentation there. Um, before I let you go, though, before I release you, um, just one quick question that I, I know might be in our um, participants' minds. What is the process? Or can you tell us a little bit just briefly on the, the process of, let's say I decide I want to explore Azure infrastructure and applications. Um, mm -hmm. Can you tell us what's the what's the process? How does someone get the right tools, the right fit, understand what it like? Can you tell us a bit about that side from the, the customer service side of things? Sure. Typically, if you have if you're a commercial account, you can contact your account team and they'll put you in touch with someone like myself who can speak to mm -hmm. you a little bit more about this. Um, if you're interested in doing some homework on your own, I recommend docs.microsoft.com and you can learn more about all of our offerings. Um, and another site that I would recommend would be the Azure Pricing Calculator. It's actually a public facing calculator where you can price out what some of your solutions might look like and get a feel for the cost savings that your firm could experience by moving some backup and disaster recovery solutions to Azure. OK, thank you very much, Sam. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen, Sam French and Azure and infrastructure and applications specialist from Microsoft. Of course, he would have presented so many great um, parts of information telling us about how to securely create um, re resilience, back up our files remotely. Again, it's all about business continuity and disaster preparedness. So as we keep the ball rolling this morning, here as we transform Caribbean, we're going to move on into one of our next partners, and this is Digicel Business. And here today, we're pleased to have with us Mark Mimna. And Mark is the head of Digicel Business in the Cayman Islands. He a role he's held there for, for two years. Prior to that, he was the product manager for Digicel Cayman. And you know, Mark was responsible for the rollout of cloud services, included hosted, UC, Draz, and security services in Cayman. Prior to joining Digicel, Mark worked for Aircom in Ireland in the business solutions group where he was involved in large data center and connectivity solutions. Good morning, Mark. Good morning. That's a brilliant introduction. Thank you very much, Colin. Well, it's all it's all the stuff you've done, so thank you for giving <laughs> us so much brilliant. info. But Mark, I noted this morning you're here to present working with customers and to tell us how we're going to transform a customer working environment, correct? Yes, correct. Yeah. So um, you know, Sam did a really great presentation there, and sometimes the technology can be quite overwhelming for some companies and stuff because there, it is a lot, right? And it can be complicated, but the beauties of working with Digicel, Microsoft and various partners in the region is that we can simplify that so that the businesses can just focus on their, you know, core responsibilities. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk a little bit about some research Digicel business did in the region and how we've like transformed our own product offering and product sets. And then I'll bring uh, the audience to like a live case where we brought a customer from like old legacy systems to like a brand new up to date uh, service using Microsoft services, Microsoft Azure and the Office 365 product suite. So um, I'm just going to start sharing now, if that's OK. Uh, let's get this up and running. Just let me know. Everybody can uh, see my presentation. Whoops, back yes, to the can. start. We all good to go, everybody? Great. Yes, OK, yeah. so uh, uh, my name is Mark, work for uh, Digicel uh, Business in the Cayman Islands. I'm the head of business here and I've been doing that job for a few years. Prior to that, as Colin said, worked in cloud um, and just, you know, bringing the products to the, the market, essentially. So I kind of have a fair idea what customers want, uh, I think. Uh, uh, and today's agenda, you know, we'll just talk a little bit about Digicel Business for some people who are joining might not know uh, the kind of services we offer. And then we'll talk through about the research that we conducted and then working with customers and partners and then the overall solution. So uh, this is just a um, little kind of timeline of Digicel Business, 32 countries, about $400 uh, million across all services. 
from enterprise customers, government SMEs. So we're quite well established in the region, have connectivity and data centers across the across the, the network. And not only do we work with Microsoft, which is one of our top partners, we also work with partners like Cisco, Meraki, IBM, and we bring those solutions together for for the uh, for all customers, really um, enterprise SME. Um, so, um, but one of the key things that we're like very proud of recently is that we actually achieved um, from Microsoft Azure Cloud, uh, what was it? sorry, a gold partner status for um, Azure Cloud Platform, cloud productivity, and small mid-market uh, cloud solutions. So, like we are um, leading kind of integrators on bringing Microsoft solutions to customers. So, if anybody wants to. Uh, Ask any questions about that, you know, feel free uh, in the Q&A, but uh, we're, we have an established kind of Microsoft base, which might be kind of uh, news to, to some customers, uh, but it's something that we've been doing for, for quite a while. So I'm just going to talk to you a little bit about Customer Insights, some of the research that was conducted throughout the pandemic. Um, and this was kind of just to kind of, Digicel was trying to understand, you know, what, how can we help customers? What do customers want? What do they need? Um, you know, what, what are the concerns that businesses have? And it's a it's a wide variety of the customer base from large customers, smaller customers. But, you know, to be honest, you know, the teams are the same across all businesses like shock horror that, you know, 73 percent of customers see a downturn in revenue due to the pandemic. Um, obviously, you know, all businesses were affected. Um, I don't think there is many businesses that weren't affected with with the downturn, but that also brought up uh, other kind of challenges such as cyber security threats when people were working at home. You know, can they remote in? Are they secure? That kind of stuff that became like, you know, people's top of people's agenda. Um, also, we talk about we ask them about, you know, future planning, stuff like that. You know, wh what do they want from their business? How do they how can they see it changing? You know, what opportunities have come out of the the, the pandemic and <clears throat> a lot of people obviously want to improve productivity, but we see like cybersecurity as a top one, moving to the cloud is another top one, and then obviously improve remote uh, working capability. So Digicel and D Digicel Business and its partners with Microsoft and other other partners, you know, can help customers kind of br bring them on that journey. Um, and what, what we're seeing uh, in Cayman especially is that companies are continuing to have remote working options. And if they're continuing to have remote working options, they need to have those individuals and their network um, secure. <clears throat> so one of the things we talk about, uh, you know, digital transformation in terms of um, for businesses, you know, like if you ask a customer, do you have a digital strategy? They'll probably all say yes. Do they have a clear digital strategy? Maybe they don't know, but asking them, you know, why do they want it is an interesting question because, you know, who doesn't want to improve customer experience and engagement um, and improve efficiency and innovation? But people talk about it, but now the time is now they have to actually do it because the, the world has changed. The, the uh, customers have changed, the staff have changed, it different requirements and different um, um, responsibilities people have, but the business still has to operate and it still has to try and make money for its shareholders and owners. Um, so, you know, what does that mean? You know, what do you, what, what is becoming digital? How important is it? And we know that uh, in the last, say, 18 months, a uh, line of business owners within um, businesses are looking to have a digital strategy and digital technology. So uh, prior to say the pandemic or just to start, yeah, it was very, it was important um, kind of a year on, it's kind of moved up the chain. It's actually now becoming a lot more important. And then in the future, it's becoming, you know, absolutely imperative that they do something, but how do they do it? What do they do? And that's the question that we are trying to answer with Digicel Business and our partners. Um, so again, is COVID a driver for change? Well, yes, uh, we know it is. Did they have a digital strategy pre-COVID? Some of, you know, a lot of people would say yes, but since the pandemic has happened, you know, it's become a more of a priority for business owners and and uh, line of business owners within those businesses so they can operate more efficiently. So one of the key things is like when we speak to customers is, you know, how are you 
going to get there. And, you know, there's a common themes that happen um, when when people want to do digital transformation, they don't have enough skills, insufficient resources. They don't quite know how to do it. There's security concerns, you know, and the technology sometimes can be a bit complex. They, they kind of know they need to do something, but they're not quite sure uh, what to do. And that's why Digicel Business, Microsoft help customers um, go on the journey so that they be, can become digital. They can transform their infrastructure. They can utilize the technology that Sam mentioned on the Azure. Um, and we, we, we simplify that and we make it easy to adopt. And that's, that's what we try to do. And that's what I try to do in my role as head of business. Um, and because of the kind of information that we have um, from the customers, Digicel Business across the group has adopted these, what we call five pillars, right? So um, these are like our kind of, what we see as key requirements for businesses and the technology um, that underpins these pillars is the Microsoft Azure and the Microsoft suite of products brought to you integrated with Digicel and its partners. So all of the, there probably isn't a company in the world that doesn't have you know, a requirement for a flexible workplace, collaboration, business continuity, security. We see a lot of companies going more kind of IoT monitoring, that kind of thing as well. So it's kind of industry, industry specific, uh, that one, I suppose. But Digicel Business kind of can adapt these solutions to your business, whether they're big, small, enterprise or government. You know, we work with you and we work with um, our partners to deliver the, the solution. So that kind of sets the background of kind of where Digicel Business is heading, what we're trying to do. Um, and I'm going to talk to you now about an actual real life um, case study of how Digicel Business worked with customer Microsoft, how we brought a customer um, from a legacy system to a kind of more modern, um, best of breed Microsoft service uh, with Digicel support. OK, so to understand how we did this, we need to understand like, you know, what were the problems with the customer? So this is a small um, legal firm, small, there's about maybe 10 people actually employed in it uh, locally here in Cayman. Um, and they approached us to kind of um, figure out what what we could do for them. They knew they had a problem, right? They knew they had to have something in place. Um, they, the, tech, the current technology they had was old. The servers are running old OS. They kind of had some Office 365, but they weren't really fully utilizing it. Um, they had issues during the lockdown, remote working. They didn't have a solution. They didn't really know what to do. Um, they currently are, you know, they have a legal and regulatory requirement for security, um, data protection, GDPR, all that kind of stuff they needed to address. Even a small firm has these obligations under the laws in Cayman. And, and, and if they want to operate in different jurisdictions, they need to be compliant. Um, they don't have the in-house technical skills. They have expensive ongoing support that they pay like a local a local partner. And like, uh, and the the kind of the good thing with this customer, I suppose, is they kind of knew they needed to do something, right? But they don't have the expertise to to figure out what it is they need. So they're kind of asking us to help them. Um, their business and their their, their, I suppose their risk profile from an internal kind of business perspective increased because of the technology constraints they have, the additional security and compliance that's required by the regulatory authorities in Cayman uh, increases, you know, their 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 risk. Right? They know they need to work smarter. They know they need to have some collaboration. They know that if there's another lockdown or another curfew, that they have to be able to communicate with their customers in a secure and safe manner. Um, but, you know, they understand that the change is going to be what they would say the term hassly, right? It's, it's a lot of hassle for us to do this, but, you know, they have to be able to, um, I suppose, uh, undergo a, sm a small little bit of transformation and pain to, to get to where they are. But the beauty with the Microsoft and the Digicel partnership is that we can remove the hassle. We can make it easy because we, we, we have the technology and the skills to do that. So what exactly did we do? So um, we didn't, you know, obviously the technology 
is the enabler of the business here. But actually from a Digicel business, Microsoft and our partners locally sold to help with some of the um, SharePoint design and the migration is that, you know, we engage in a consultation process. So it's listening to the customer, uh, finding out, you know, where the constraints are, what we can do to help, what's the biggest blocker to them moving forward um, and understanding, you know, understanding the limitations they have now, where they want to get to and what we, we can do. Um, obviously, then we implement a design. We make sure the design is right for them. It's the correct fit. It's not has enough room for growth. They have enough data um, and that the time timing is right, that they can decommission their physical equipment and move it to the cloud. Um, you know, what, what did we come up with? Well, you know, what was the answer? Um, well, you know, the answer is partly some of uh, Sam's uh, technology, you know, on the Azure with some SharePoint backup recovery, that kind of thing. Obviously, the uh, the line of business application is essentially their Office 365 with the higher premium uh, subscription that gives them extra security, better collaboration features. Um, and also, you know, we do the backup and recovery for them as well using the Azure Cloud. So from a customer point of view, you know, they see a solution that works in the back end, the technology that puts it all together is developed and designed by Microsoft and Digicel. So we come together to ensure that it works and it's integrated and it works seamlessly for the customer. So part of the overall kind of solution is, <clears throat> you know, the customer also has a network, right? So they have equipment, switches, routers, firewalls, um, Wi-Fi. You know, that also needs to be encompassed as part of the solution because you can have the best solution in the world, but if you don't have a decent network, it's going to make it difficult to manage. Um, so with Digicel, we supplied um, the actual internet connectivity, the wireless, the switching, the router, 24-7, the teams calling, where we bundled it all together for them in a monthly fee, remove their old uh, servers, and now they have a, f a fully modern on-demand zero capex hosted solution with state-of-the-art technology that is fit for you know the same the same services that we put in would operate you know fortune 500 companies but we bring in that technology to the mid-market and the sme space so as you sell business can help you know that those kind of customers uh realize that transformation and it's not expensive um it's not that complicated and we take the hassle out of it for you. So if you are interested in having a chat to us about this, to reach out to your Digicel rep in your market or you can contact me directly. Uh, we'll work with Microsoft, we'll work with your partners, we'll make sure that the service that we put in is fit for purpose, best of breed technology, and you can rest assured that we'll support you 24 seven throughout the whole process. Um, so I suppose, um, that really kind of is the end of the presentation. Um, just to recap, you know, we provided like turnkey solutions to mid-market legal entity. Um, there's a small, a small company, um, but they have the best of breed technology to take them on their journey to the next level of their expansion. They're also secure. They have their compliance up to date. They have their backup sorted. They have their connectivity sorted. You know they're happy, they can continue about their business. They don't need now to worry about the technology. Um, and that is the end of my presentation. So Thank you. Um, I'm happy happy to take questions in the Q&A, um, specifically around any compliance and stuff like that on how we adapt some of the Azure and Azure stack in the region. If people have any interest in that, they can reach out to me directly and we can, uh, we can, we can help with that as well. All right, and thank you so much, Mark. I mean, I, I would have, um, I'm sure our participants would have been very happy at that. One of the, the, the changes you, you made there, where you said, um, you know, let us do all the work for you. You just relax and focus on what you're good at, right? Yeah, and I, that's a key point, right? Because like, um, you know, we are in the business of, you know, deploying customer technology and customer solutions, whereas like a legal firm isn't, right? The legal firm is in the business of law. Like I don't yep. do law, did you sell business doesn't do law. So we focus on what we're, we're good at. They focus on what they're good at. We provide a service to them that meets their requirements. So customers who are unsure or they need to 
they know they need to make a change or they're not quite sure that they want some more information or they want to help in hand, you know, please reach out to Digisol Business. Uh, we're more than happy to take you through the journey. We'll work with you, work with your partners, work with our vendors to give you the best of breed solution. All right, thank you. So ladies and gentlemen, there you have it. That's Mark Mimna. He's the head of Digicel Business from the Cayman Islands, beautiful Cayman Islands. And, you know, we've seen that some participants may have joined after the initial start. So once again, welcome to you. Welcome to Transform Caribbean. And of course, we're giving you the opportunity to win some really great prizes and to interact with us. So in order to interact with us, it's quite simple. You're going to go to the top right hand corner of your screen. You're going to see two speech bubbles. One has a little question mark in it. That's for the Q&A. Um, and in there, you can provide your feedback to our participants and our, our pre presenters. And you can also ask your questions because we're sure that based on the, the content being covered today, um, disaster preparedness in the region and ensuring that we have business continuity and resilience following natural disasters, that there might be so much questions that you will have as it relates to your individual circumstance, your business and your island. And of course, we have the experts here with us this morning to definitely help you navigate those um, questions that you may have. And also, um, as I spoke about prizes, the Samsung S20 FE, of course, is available to you as a great prize that you can win this morning for participating in today's seminar. And it's quite so easy. Um, in the chat, you would have seen a Excel spreadsheet being loaded there from the, the conference management. And it's pretty simple. You just go there, insert your contact details or your name, and that's it. We're going to have a random draw at the end of the presentations today, at the end of the Q&A, but we're going to announce who's the winner. And of course, we can have a winner from Barbados, Jamaica, Cayman Islands, or Trinidad and Tobago, as we have participants from these four countries, but here with us this morning. So as we keep it rolling nicely into our next presentation, I mean, so far we would have heard from Sam French of Microsoft, who explained the importance of resilience, how it works, why it's important to have your data and information backed up on multiple areas, of course, using the Azure platform. Um, we heard from Mark Mimna of Digicel Business. Of course, Mark told us about how Digicel Business can help transform your business using the tools from Microsoft and how we are there to provide that 24 seven support to make sure that, you know what, Leave the, the technology the technology stuff to the technology experts, right? So that you can focus on your business. And next up, we're going to have Jesus Rodriguez from InfoBip, and he's a partner with for the omnichannel platform for Trend. And Trend is one of our partners here today. They're the leading digital advertising agency in the Caribbean. So Jesus was born in Caracas, Venezuela, and he has a bachelor in telecommunications uh, engineer and he's more than 10 years experience in transforming businesses and applying technological solutions. Jesus is always looking for ways to improve processes within companies to help you guys become more efficient. He's passionate about digital transformation and how to apply technology in the different aspects of the consumer or customer experience. And of course, getting the best out of this and helping you get the best experience that you can deliver to your customers. So here to deliver, keeping customers updated through cloud communication services with the omnichannel platform, we welcome account executive from InfoBip, Jesus Rodriguez. Good morning, Jesus. Morning, Colin. Thank you for that uh, introduction. I appreciate it. Not a problem at all. <laughs> Thank you very much. So as you mentioned, keep the ball rolling. So let's start with uh, how to keep our customers updated through cloud communication services. First of all, I want to introduce myself. I am the regional manager for the Caribbean market at InfoBib. And also I want to thank you uh, to Daniel Vanegas, who is my right hand in all of this kind of stuff, preparing these kind of presentations. So thank you, Daniel. Daniel is the regional technical specialist for the Caribbean market at InfoBib. Here is a short agenda. OK, basically, I, I want to start introducing the Trend Media and InfoBip partnership. Then I'm going to talk a little bit what InfoBip does. And of course, last but not least, how we can improve our customer experience through omnichannel experience. OK, so basically InfoBip has uh, more than five years working together uh, with Trend Media in more than 10 countries with local presence. 
and having more than 150 customers satisfies right now. We have an exclusivity partnership with Trend Media across all of these countries, delivering more than 7.5 million of SMS monthly with a delivery rate in uh, up to 95%. Okay, that guarantee basically that all the messages that you are sending through our platform should be delivered to the destination. And what Infobit does, basically we create seamless interactions between business and people. And how we do it, basically Infobit is a global leader in omni-channel communication. We make our business to simplify how our brands connect with, engage, and delight their customers at global scale. Our programmable communication platforms deliver a suite of tools and basically we provide different tools to communicate with people across the world, not only in the Caribbean region, but also across the entire world. We have presence in more than 20 offices across the globe, more than 2.8K employees globally, and more than 600 direct connection with the different operations, operators, sorry. So basically that allows us to deliver the message across the world. Let me show with you a, a couple of numbers about the digital transformation led by Infobip. Basically with multiple con companies, we have helped them to increase uh, the customer satisfaction score. Also, we are helping customers to increase the agent productivity. So as part of our solutions, we provide contact center solutions so we can help the companies to increase the productivity of their agents using the different tools that we have in our solution portfolio. Also, with all of these different tools that we have in place, we can help the customer to reduce the operational cost, and that is a key benefit from our solutions. We can also help increase the revenue, utilizing different communication channels and touch points with our companies, okay, our customers. And how, how this omni-channel experience is translated in, in the way that we can connect with our customers, our, our end users. So let me share with you a couple of numbers related to these disasters uh, on this um, tropical storm catastrophic disaster that suffered, of course, all the Caribbean islands all the years. So basically we identify that 85% of the people have gathered supplies. That means that people has continued building an, an, a strong intention to prepare for disasters. Also, 48% have created plans, emergency plans. Okay, that means that the people understood that the disaster is coming and they cannot do basically anything against that. But people are prepared. People are more prepared. People are saving money, preparing for these emergency uh, catastrophic events, and also acquiring different services from different, the different companies. For example, in the insurance company, people are preparing, acquiring some policies, some uh, insurance that protect them against these kind of disasters. And how all these things looks like. So let me introduce you with a couple of examples of how the companies can connect with the people using an omni-channel approach. So before the event, basically we can provide information about the different kind of disaster that may suffer the 
islands. So for example, in this case, we are providing information about hurricanes. We understand that hurricanes is basically an event that impact the Caribbean all the years. OK, actually, right now we are on the peak of the season with a couple of storms develop in the Caribbean. So basically, we can share information using different communication channels. We can connect between different tools. As you can see in the video, we are using the WhatsApp communication channel, but also we are using a website to interact with our customers. OK. So using these kind of things, the people can understand if they are prepared or not. It's important to mention that. This is not only applying for disasters, OK? So we can create this kind of strategies, not only for disaster, but also in our daily basis in our business. OK, so for example, in the retails. In the retail segment, OK. We can understand if our customer are prepared or not with the goods or supplies that they need to face this kind of events. So for example, we can ask the customer if they have the principal supplies to take a, or, or to face the storm and also provide them different or additional elements that they can acquire to face this kind of a event. So we can connect the digital channels, the omni-channel platform with the website of the company and also start engaging the customer and selling more services. OK, so here is a, an example how we can connect with the website and also if the customer doesn't have the supplies, OK, we can promote the people to acquire or to go to a store using the different communication channels. OK, so for for example, here the person is uh, asking which is the nearest location. OK, and our solutions can provide this kind of information. OK. Just to let you know, if you want to know more about this kind of communication channels, you can scan the QR code in the bottom of the slide and connect with us. OK. Another example, for example, in the finance, in the financial and insurance uh, sectors. So here we can also ask for the people and promote the people to acquire additional services. OK, so for example, here is how the people can prepare. In the financial uh, aspect against the uh, disaster. OK, so basically this particular person asked to how to protect their property. OK, and the people can select different options check the current coverage of the policy, also renew the policy if, if it's near to expire, and also get an adequate policy for the disaster that is coming to the to the island. OK, in this case, the people ask for adequate policy. OK, and additional feature that we can provide you is the ability to connect not only with chatbot communications, but all also with people. OK, we understand that we are talking to people, so we need to provide the ability to talk with people. So that is why InfoBib also has the contact center as a, serv as a service where we can start communicating with a real agent and provide direct communications and direct responses to our customers. OK. And what happened during the event? During the event, we understand that people are more focused on be safe. OK, 
But we as a business, maybe it's a good practice to inform our customer what is happening. So that is why InfoBib also have different communication channels, such as SMS, email, WhatsApp, so on, where we can start communicating with people how is the storm developing? Okay, is the is if the storm is entering the territory, is the storm is left the territory, if there is a, a flooding area or whatever we can communicate with our customers related to a disaster, we can use the different communication channels. And this is a, a very good advantage of Infobit because we can also create different failover mechanism to reach our customers. So we can understand if the customers received the message, read the message, or ignore the message, and based on that, start sending communications using another channel. The idea during the event is to keep our customers informed what is happening during the disaster. Okay. And also we can provide two way communications. Okay. So for example, if during the event, during the disaster, the people require some help, we can provide different communication channels as an alternative to connect with the business. Okay. So we can, and this is basically especially, uh, especially designed for the government, for healthcare segment, uh, where we can ask them to provide an ambulance, for example, or ask to the energy system to provide uh, energy to, to, the, to the area, to the local area, to send some uh, people to repair the, the, the post or something. So we can create this kind of two-way communications with our business, okay? And what happened after the event? This is very important. After the event, we need to provide the customers the opportunity to connect with us again and also help our customers. And how we can help them? We can help them, for example, offering them different recovery plans, okay, in case that we are we are giving the customers uh, such as credit, such as uh, economic helps. So we can help our customer giving them information about the government relief, for example. Okay, if the government if, if the government launched some campaigns to relieve the commerce, relieve the people, we can support the people using communication channels to connect with them. Okay, so this is basically how it works. Okay, we can extrapolate this to the different um, use cases that you may have in your mind. Okay, this is not only for disaster. This is just an example because this is the, the, the topic of this particular event, but also we can extrapolate these kind of things in our business. So we can automatize different tasks, we can provide different communication tools and customer engagement solutions. Okay. And you may may think, okay, so who is the person responsible to trigger this kind of notifications? So don't worry about it. We are on the cloud. And as Sam mentioned, in the cloud the services is still running. So we can connect with different tools in the cloud and create some triggers to start informing our customers in an automated way. Okay, so just a little wrap up. With the implementation of cloud solutions such as cloud communication platforms with an omni-channel approach and creating strategies that enable us to build a scalable and flexible solutions that guarantee our business continuity, we can help our customers position their brand. And this is very important. Creating remembrance, loyalty, and sense of belonging. 
Additionally, with the help of customer engagement solutions and chatbot strategies with artificial intelligence, we can create hyper-personalized profiles that enable us to automatize and optimize different processes, understanding our customer needs and taking them to the next level of customer experience. And finally, another point that we can set aside is security. Security is something that we always have to keep in mind. While implementing this kind of strategies, we must protect and guarantee the security of customers' data with different tools and mechanisms to ensure an integral success. All right, so thank you so much, Jesus. Um, I really think we got a lot of information there. Many, um, I'm sure many of um, our participants may not have been uh, fully aware of what um, omni-channel communication is and InfoBIP and how it's all integrated. So thank you so much for giving us so much detail in terms of what um, is available to our participants there, regardless of the country in which they're in, um, to help them communicate before, during, and after um, any sort of disasters um, to ensure they, of course, their business resilience and continuity. So at this time, thank you, Colin. You're welcome. So at this time, of course, we are going to now invite our participants to shoot their questions to our various presenters. So once again, just to recap, we would have had Sam French from Microsoft. We, of course, had Mark Mimna from Digital Business Cayman Islands. Mm -hmm. And then we wrap, bring up the tail end here. We just had Jesus Rodriguez um, from InfoBIP and our friends at Trend, the leading digital advertising agency in the Caribbean. So as I, I saw, we have some questions coming in. So I'm going to kick things off. Um, our first question comes from Mr. Bihari. And he would like to know what options are available for customers who need in-country data replication due to a national policy um, on storing citizen data. And for this question, we're going to ask Mark if he can um, help us with, with this question. <clears throat> yeah. So again, uh, what options are available for customers in a country um, where they need to have data replication due to a national policy and how they store citizens' data? Yeah, um, that's a good question um, and commonly asked. So I'll give you an example of what we've been able to do here in Cayman and how it's kind of how it can be replicated in the in the region. Let me just turn on the video there as well. Um, so basically, um, with the Microsoft Azure um, in Cayman, we partner with a company called Salt Technology Group. Mm -hmm. And what they've done is they have their own uh, Azure stack in Ireland, right? So what we're able to do for customers if they have, say, some on-premise equipment and they want to store the data in the cloud on Ireland or a different part of the island, they can replicate their data from their on-premise to their Azure cloud. Alternatively, if they're already in the cloud using Azure, uh, they can replicate their data back to the Azure stack. And in fact, the partnership we have with <coughs> Salt in the region is you can back up between Cayman, Bermuda, Jamaica, so you can, depending on what you want and how your design operates, you can work with Digicel and we can help you tease that out. <coughs> Excuse me. So there's um th that technology is available for all customers, enterprise customers, um, SMEs. Um, we can integrate the VMware or the Microsoft backup, whichever whichever one they want really. So it's um. It's um, it's an interesting development, and yeah. um, it, it, you can you leverage the Azure technology in the region where you want to have your data. Well, I, I would have seen that you would have also answered the second part of that question coming in from from um, Niran, where he was trying to ask um, how well <coughs> would Azure integrate with the replication and a hybrid model when cloud is used for a local um, automatic failover, and how does that integrate with what Digicel offers? And, and finally, just to give you the last end of that question, um, how cost effective is something like that for a small Caribbean business? So, yeah, like, um, so which part should I go first? Go with the second bit first. So, um, like, yes, you can integrate your hybrid cloud to the Azure cloud or the Azure stack. Like, it's, it's like a design, really, right? It's a design process, what you want, how much data you want, 
what loads do you want to move off? Um, and, you know, how critical is the data? <coughs> Excuse me, the question on how cost effective it is. Well, it's it, it, like Sam mentioned in his, I suppose, um, his presentation, the cost of an outage can cost up to what? $2,500 a day. So um, what we're trying to do is prevent outages, prevent downtime. Mm -hmm. But I'll give you an example. The solution we put in for the legal firm in Cayman that I talked about, mm -hmm. that end to end, including all the network connectivity, costs about 980 US a month. OK, affordable. All right, so as yeah. you just mentioned, <coughs> Sam, I want to throw this next question at Sam, our friend from Microsoft. So, Sham, let, um, Mark just mentioned pricing, so he would have just introduced the idea of pricing, right? Um, and I know you would have mentioned earlier that uh, Azure has an online pricing calculator, correct? Yeah, that's correct. It's a public facing calculator. Calculator. Right. So can you tell us a bit in terms of um, what type of information would be um, best suited in order for someone to be able to use that calculator efficiently? So what type of information should I know before I even go to this site to, to try to get a price on these services? Sure, yeah. So the calculator only applies to our Microsoft native services. So if you're looking for something that's offered in the marketplace, maybe like a, a Palo Alto solution or an F5 firewall, that stuff won't be available in this calculator. This is just going to be Azure native services like virtual machines, express route, VPN, storage costs. It's good to have an idea of what your servers look like on prem. And what I mean by that is how many uh, CPU cores, how many gigs of RAM, and then how big are the hard drives. And you can actually go and match directly in the Azure portal uh, those specific sizes, and it'll spit out a price per month um, of what that could look like if you were to migrate that server to Azure. Beyond that, for backups, we do have a backup tab, and you could put in, you know, I want to keep my daily backups for 30 days, my weekly backups for six weeks, my yearly backups for 10 years, and it's going to spit out a price right there um, on how much the backup would cost. Yeah, thank you. Very helpful because, um, I mean, you know, in, in this realm of we're now in 2021 and it's all about um, using technology to self serve, right? Um, instead of once upon a time, we may have had to submit a, a request and wait for it to be processed. But of course, Microsoft is now giving you the ability to go on this online platform and to put in some of this information and, and create a, a price. So you have a gauge of how much it's going to cost. So once again, Sam, can you just remind our participants what's the link or the URL where they're going to access this online calculator? Yeah, I'm actually going to paste it in the Q&A chat. Uh, but if you were to just search on Bing or on Google uh, Azure Pricing Calculator, it would pull up the same link I'll send you. And in fact, if you were to ask one of the Microsoft account reps for pricing, I would see the same pricing that you would see in this calculator. 90% of the time, I use the same calculator you would. So OK, great. Um, I want to now switch over to Jesus from InfoBib, um, of course, from, from Trend. Jesus, um, we, you spoke a lot about the multiple ways in which um, InfoBib can keep customers um, uh, communicated with or, or engaged throughout yep. disasters. And, and, and just to be clear, this, is, this doesn't only, yes, it's applicable to disasters, but it's not just about disasters, correct? Correct. That correct. businesses are, on a day-to-day -day basis, regardless of industry, can use this platform to engage customers, keep them informed, get information, surveys, etc. Correct. Totally agree, uh, Colin. The people can use or extrapolate the disaster that I just presented to different use cases. OK, so maybe we can use the different communication channels to marketing purposes, for example. Or also, we can provide a, a chatbot solutions to provide a responses for the most frequently asked questions uh, using not only WhatsApp, but also different communication channels. We can also create uh, use cases for support or maybe reminders or maybe appointment, schedule an appointment. We can use the digital channels to do that. So it's not only focused on a disaster, but also to different use cases in the digital transformation. We understand so, that people, go ahead. No, go ahead. I want you to wrap up. <laughs> so basically we understand that people uh, already are using communication channels to connect with families, friends, and so on. 
but why not use the communication channels to the digital communication channels to connect with businesses? Right. Okay. So it's good you went there because that's what I was going to ask next. In terms of how would businesses use this to know, um, or how can the business be boosted using the Microsoft Cloud services with InfoBIP? So you were kind of going into that. So tell us a little bit more about how, okay, I have a business and I want to grow this business. Of course, using Microsoft Cloud, using working with digital business and InfoBIP, how, how would that actually be done? Perfect. Excellent questions, Colin. Uh, so basically, InfoBIP provide a native and customized integrations, okay, with Microsoft. So basically, we can implement different use cases using this uh, kind of integrations with uh, Microsoft. As I mentioned, the integrations can be native, okay, uh, just to, to start using it directly from the Microsoft side, but also we can uh, create different customized uh, integrations to build this kind of hyper-personalized customer profiles and automate different processes during the customer journey. Okay. Um, and and since you've spoken about building this into the customer's journey, can you tell us a little bit about some of the industries that InfoBIP has been working with or that you all have helped grow or that some of the um, SMBs, for instance, that currently use InfoBIP? Yeah, sure, for sure. So maybe you can think that this kind of solutions is more for biggest companies, but let me tell you that is not the, the reality. Our Biggest experience is more in insurance, banking, and, and retail, okay? But our solutions are 100% modular, okay? So we can help the customer's growth, okay? And to convert this uh, kind of uh, business, small business, in huge businesses, okay? Okay, so thank you very much. Um, and at this time, Thank I just you. want to say, of course, thanks to all of our presenters. We had Sam French from Microsoft. Of course, Mark Mimna from Digicel Business, Cayman Islands. And Jesus Rodriguez from InfoBIP, our friends at Trend, the region's leading digital advertising agency. And I know many of you participants there are, of course, wanting to know who would have won our Samsung S20 this morning, courtesy of friends at Digicel Business. Um, so it's time to announce the winner. So by complete random draw out of our attendees here today, um, the winner of the Samsung S20 QDC digital business is Anil Somesa, Somesa, I think it is. So Anil Somesa, P2P Network Communications Limited. Congratulations. You are the winner of a brand new beautiful S10 um, smartphone device, courtesy of friends at Digital Business, um, who will be in contact with you to arrange a collection of such. To all of our attendees out there, we want to thank you all so very much for logging on this morning and for spending or investing your time with us. Of course, once again, feel free to reach out to our various teams at Microsoft, Digital Business or Trend to find out how each of them can help you grow your business and more importantly, to make you disaster proof per se and ensure that regardless of the disaster, um, that you will have business continuity and resilience moving forward. Um, as we wrap this morning, once again, thank you all for joining us. We encourage you to please stay safe, follow the respective COVID-19 protocols within your area. Of course, they've been very basic. Wear a mask, watch your distance, wash your hands, and of course, stay safe until next time. So once again, my name is Colin Graves. I'm the head of public relations at Digital Trinidad and Tobago. It's been a pleasure spending the last hour and a half with you, and I wish you all the best. And have a great day, everyone. Take care and goodbye.